I just need to see one thing as it, oops. The content of this media is being sent to a third party. I imagine that means that, that we are going live on YouTube. They have new things that they're saying. Or we're broadcasting for someone like on another planet. So let me do one more thing. As we're coming in, just come into a landing in your body. Feel what it feels like to be you. And feel what it feels like to be in your body right now. So we're trying to come into body not from a objectified, this thing separate from my mind thing, but as an experience that we are in for our entire life. It is the ground of all of our experience for the rest of our life. So being kind and gentle to your body throughout this. We are going to do a limp flush today. And I want to just say, I got, I got some feedback from a um, guy who's a microsurgeon who was like, you shouldn't be teaching that limp flush. That is going to destroy lymphatic no, lymph nodes and capillaries. I'm a microsurgeon and I know. And I'm like, he might be right if your skin has very little integrity. If you, if, if you aren't accustomed to touching yourself, if you don't have some sensitivity to feeling into your body. And I responded with that, that I feel like we need to be able to touch our bodies. If we would destroy everything by doing this type of movement, we should never get a massage. We should never have sex. We should never, you know, do anything really physical or we'd be destroying our inner body. So it speaks to the integrity of our fascia which is the matrix that's holding our whole body together. And when we move it, when we make demands on our fascia, our fascia learns to receive that. And I also want to say one more thing, because I was just looking at some fascia stuff and there's a thing called a fascia blaster. And there are things where they really get in and I, and blasting, what is that doing? It's, it's really getting into the integrity of your fascia. And I would say that most of the time you do not want to do something that hard on your body. But having said that, I've also had really deep work done that did work to heal my body and injuries that I've had. So I think we really have to tune into these levels of understanding with our body that like, and when I had that really deep work done, I, I worked with a, a guy, a massage therapist who was just really getting in there and working at like insertions. And I'd had some injuries that had been there for a long time. Over the period of a month, I saw him a bunch, had the most painful body work ever but it healed all of my problems, but it took time. It wasn't like, oh, I felt better instantly and now it's all good. It was like over the process, my body reintegrated, like the stuff got broken down, the scar tissue and it was reintegrated. There's probably not a lot of scar tissue around these parts of our bodies. And I wanna say that when I'm touching in there, I'm not jamming my fingers into my body. I'm kind of grabbing with my fingertips like a tree frog and moving around the tissue underneath. So just really responding to what that guy was saying, if that hurts at all, if that feels sensitive, don't go deeper, right? We want to have a relationship where we can touch ourselves without getting injured, without destroying our capillaries and our, our lymphatic flow, right? And movement gets the, and deep diaphragmatic breathing, all of that is going to get your lymph flow going as well. And let me say that the people that I follow, the chiropractors who are doctors, who I learned this, um, these, these techniques from, go a lot deeper than I'm going. So you are touching your own body. You do not want to injure yourself, but you want to come into a relationship where you're like, oh, does this feel like the right amount of pressure? Yes. And we should be able to touch our bodies, right? We need it. It increases the integrity of our fascia to have some movement. So, and that is one thing that I will say, I know a shit ton about fascia because I've been studying it since I was in my twenties. So thank you, Dr for pointing this out, that this might do that. But I think that when we have integrity in our system, we aren't going to be destroying things. So rubbing your hands together. Having said that big lecture, but I did respond to him. I'm like, we need to learn how to touch our bodies so that we do not hurt ourselves. And let's just inhale and open, breathe and exhale, radiating outward. Inhale, open. Exhale radiate out and inhale open. So if people are living a particularly sedentary, non-moving lifestyle, their fascia may not be able to contain and hold them. And like the fascia is holding the vascular system. It is constructing it, right? It's this matrix in our whole body. So if we don't move, 
that gets like felt, like boiled wool. It's not coherent. But if we move fairly regularly, we're going to have much more coherent fascia, which is the holding pattern for all of this stuff. This is the healing place for all of this stuff. Right hand to the left clavicle. You can go over and under. For me, being a very rough and tumble person who can take a lot of pressure on my body, I go fairly deep. But if you are much more, oh, just a little bit, oh, that's too much, listen to that. That is your system telling you, touch me softer. So take it in, right? I think it was great that he said that because maybe he's right for some people. I know that that is not what's happening in my system. And then let's go up around the angle of the jaw. We're just going to do that side, collarbone and angle of the jaw together. And this is where I go much gentler up here. And I'm not jamming my fingers into my lymph nodes. I'm taking the skin and moving it above the area that where the lymph nodes are. So I'm not trying to poke in and destroy anything. I'm trying to get the surface area moving, which then draws movement into the movement, into the into the underlying tissue. Same thing on the other side. Getting in there as deep as feels right in your body, which everybody's body is different. Every day is a different day in your body. You're more hydrated, less hydrated, right? More hydrated tissue is going to be healthier. And then coming up around the angle of the jaw. And usually I slow down up here. Yeah, like if if we shouldn't touch ourselves, we should never put on lotions. We shouldn't, you know, there's too much danger of living in the world. And maybe he's working with people who don't move very much or people who are much older and the integrity of their fascia and the integrity of their system is not good. So he is probably right for those people. But if you're a moving person, and I feel like if you've made it to my channel, you are. And if certainly if you're in, your, in my class, I know you guys are all movers. It's a different story. All right, we're gonna do the thymus thump, little Tarzan. Uh, vibration from the inside to the outside. Again, improving the integrity of the tissue, giving it something. Plus we're a very touch starved world, especially post COVID. People need to touch. And if you're not getting it from someone else, touch yourself. Fingers on the K27 points right in here. And I just want to say, like, one of my problems with allopathic medicine is that it's not looking at, it's not, it's often putting a Band-Aid on a problem. Take this pill. I don't think pharmaceuticals are the answer. I feel like healthy lifestyle is a better answer, right? We eat healthy food that is actually made of food. Eat food, not too much, mostly plants. That's the Michael Pollan advice. And he means eat food that's actually made of food. Don't eat food that's processed crap made of like who knows what. Eat food that is the ingredient, like eat an apple. I'm on, a, I'm on my pedestal today, giving the lectures, <laughs> my soapbox. <laughs> and then let's take our back to our lymph flush, right hand to the left armpit, peck very gently or more intensely. Listen to your body, relate to what is going on. That soap, soap box thing. So apparently my dad was a real radical. He went to um, University of British Columbia and there was like a soap box thing and he would get up there and do these big um, lectures, speeches. He would get up on the soap box. So it, it runs in the family and change it to the other side. Ah, feeling the space in your body as you are rubbing. So it's not like I'm just touching in there. Or I'm just touching this part over there. It's in you. It's your body. Feel into it. Feel the movement coming in. And if you want to move underneath, you can feel that too. Relax your neck, tongue, and jaw. We're going to come into our diaphragm. But before we do the little pushes, we're going to do some diaphragmatic breathing. So we're going to do like a... Big sniff in and then blow out. It's a real active exhale. Real active inhale. And shake it out, let it go. And we're gonna just do a little gentle 
jamming of your thing, fingers up under your, it's not way up here under my rib cage. It's in the middle between where the end of my rib cage is and my belly button. So sternocheile. Ah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I can't tell you how many doctors I've seen that were really unhealthy. You can see it. You can look at their body and go, oh, you are not healthy. And you're a doctor. And I, there was one vet that I had for my cats who was a lovely human being and a very large person. And I brought my cat and I was like, do you think my cat's a little overweight? He's like, no, he's just a big guy. That's a perspective. Let's take our hands here. And it's not saying that people that are overweight are unhealthy. It just depends. Everything's different. Every body is different. What we're holding onto is different. And like surface fat is different than visceral fat, right? The fat around your viscera, definitely super unhealthy. Fat more on the surface in your, uh, in the fluff of your superficial fascia, not, not so bad. That can actually be like what is developed from your lifestyle. Like if you were a seal, they have a lot of that thermoregulating fat. Like that woman who, women, there's a woman who was a, get behind your knees. I can't remember her name, but she's like a cold water swimmer. And the fat layer on her body was like really even over her whole body from swimming in the cold. Like what we do to our body and how we live affects the way it forms. Good. And release it, shake it out. So I think I was thinking about this, that, you know, doing hot and cold where maybe it's in your shower, hot shower into a cold shower, you're requiring the tissue to do this, right? You're making the tissue do something. When you give your tissue some stress like that, it has to develop more integrity, right? So I feel like that is another way to get the pumping inside your tissue. All right, shake it all out. Blah, 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 blah. And I was looking it up online to see if the, uh, the studies on it. There's a lot of studies about cold plunging and breath work and hot, hot work. And, and Huberman talks a lot about it, but I also feel like even listening to the way a lot of the men who are podcasting, who are, let's say between 35 or even 20, whatever, 30 and, and 45, they're still really objectifying the body. And I know that's a scientific way, but like the participatory way of feeling into it and coming in from experience is very different. Inhale, open it up deep breath in and exhale, feeling the space around you, letting your head release down. If you're ready to bend your knees and drop down to the floor, do it. Inhale, open, exhale, flying with the big wings. Inhale, feeling the air on your skin, feeling your breath, right? Coming into the element of air ah, and into the spaciousness around our bodies, taking up space. Filling up with space. Last one. Up and let's interlace our hands on top. Open your feet wider, just shifting from side to side. Even, yeah, I mean, so much of the way that we are looking at the world as a culture is really objectifying everything. And, uh, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot more to it than that. Let's uh, push out through the heel of your hand. And as far as like our body mind, this is an experience. You're going to be in this body mind for the rest of your life. And this is the ground of all experience for you. Even if you have an out-of-body experience, it's happening from your body. It didn't happen somewhere else. Everything that's ever happened to you has happened from being in your body. Even when you're dreaming, you're dreaming from your body. Take your arms over your head, circle around. Lecture, lecture, lecture. Ah. And so all of those experiences, the way that we've learned to be in the world are reflected in our body, in the tensions we hold, change direction, in the postures we hold. And those can change in relationship to different people, right? I'm hanging out with my mom. My posture might be different than if I'm teaching a class. So yeah, so let it be whatever you think, whatever, let, let your experience of being in a body 
be part of this vitality, this process of being alive, circling one side, then the other. So we're spiraling. I am spiraling my arm as I do that. So I am like taking my hands, pushing the air, taking my hands, pushing the air. So that's one way to feel that you're getting that spiraling in your tissue is moving through the palms of your hands. And I've spread out my fingers there. And, and it's basically I'm circling on one side, circling on the other. So, and as I'm doing this in my house, I can feel how much warmer the air in the top half of the room is than the air in the bottom half of the room. Good, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Let's grab some, let's grab some weights and just do a little bit of standing stuff with weights. If you don't have weights, you can use two cans, a book, maybe two books. Try and get something of the same weight or just keep moving them back and forth. Something else. And if you don't wanna use weights at all, that's fine. I have two sets of three pound weights. So I got six pounds in each hand. You can use less, less weight, more weight as you wish. What we're gonna do is come into a parallel position, bend and straighten, just really simple, gentle, feeling into the movement, gentle and strong, strong and gentle. Five more, four, three, Two knees over the toes, last one. Pressing up over your head, tippy toes, one. We're gonna do 10, two, three, four, straight up, five, six. And when I say straight up, my hands are on the front plane of my body. So they're like lined up with my face, eight, nine, 10. Take it down, bend your knees, stick out your butt, arching with some flies, one. Two, so I'm going low, I'm working my back, I'm arching my back. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come in, let's come into a heels together. You're gonna squeeze your inner thighs together, and then you're gonna. <laughs> You're not gonna squeeze your inner thighs together right now. You are when you're closing. So your knees over your toes and then close. This position is what you got. So don't force it. Don't force your turnout. Knees over your toes, little frog legs. And you're keeping your body in a line. So not tucking your tail, but not sticking out your butt. Five more. Five, four, three, two, one. Going straight up. Now you're gonna squeeze your legs together as you come down, straightening your knees. My butt is engaged, but it's not like super, like, I don't know, I'm never gonna take a poop again. I'm not squeezing in so hard. I'm just doing enough to really maintain that rotation. Four, five, long straight legs, six, seven, breathing, eight, nine, 10. Take it down, bend your knees, arch your back, stick it out, one. Feet wide, two and parallel, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, come in and take it down to the floor. Cross-legged position, sitting on your butt. But the eat food, mostly plants thing, I do eat meat, but I don't eat a lot of meat. Like, I'm not that into it. So I'm not having big meat at every meal. If I eat meat in a day, it's at one meal but I do eat dairy. 
I watched that whole program on Netflix about you are what you eat with the twin studies. Sideways, take it forward to the other side and inhale, open. Exhale, sideways, forward, sideways, and open. And each of us has different needs within our bodies. And even at different times, we have different needs. So it's not like there's one answer. There's not one pill. And if anyone tells you that they have the answer, they're full of shit. <laughs> they have part of the answer, but they don't have the whole answer. And it might not be the answer for you. Although I always think that I have the answer and that is more movement. <laughs> and spiral along with a lot of other things. It's part of the answer. It's not the whole answer. Spiraling, if it feels good. If your spiral is painful, don't go deep. Listen to your body. And let's take it down. Relax your head and gently let your spine move from your tail to your head, bolstering up your discs. So movement helps them readjust. It also helps them receive nourishment because they do not have vascular, they're not, the veins aren't going into them. Sorry, the arteries and the veins aren't going in them. So the vascular structure isn't like feeding your discs. But when we move, they can eliminate waste and pull in whatever they need, like, uh, I want to say nutrition, but I could be wrong about that. Pull, but they do. Like everything needs something to be alive, right? Fluid, whatever, breath, air. Let's change it to the other side. And in our bodies, it's the same. So when we move, we're giving them the chance to readjust. And a lot of people think, oh my God, I've got this slip, slip disc. I shouldn't do anything. It's the opposite. You should be moving gently, not huge movement, but small, gentle movement which might not, this is, this is big movement. You might need to go smaller if stuff is going on. Tune into what it feels like and start to notice like, what is this sensation? Is this sensation something that is in the long run good or bad? And often the wisdom of your body will let you know. Let's circle the whole way around but you have to really listen and honor it. And if you're used to overriding your body all the time, it might take a while to bring that intelligence online in a way that you feel you have trust. It doesn't mean like you're never gonna get injured again. It's like if we have, if we live in a body and we move a body, our bodies, things are gonna happen. Let's spiral. Spiral all the way through your head. So it's the whole spine into the cervical vertebra, into that occipital joint, and your eyes are looking back as far as they can. So your eyes are getting some movement. Take it down the front and then shift from side to side. Maybe there's a little up down in that, maybe not. I had a weird dream last night that I was in New York City hanging out with Will Ferrell and a bunch of comedians at a Tupac Shakur memorial. <laughs> it was really weird. And then come up and let's open up and let's just get some mobility in the hips and massage out our glutes. So rolling from side to side, mobilizing. And the deeper I go, the more I'm going to get into my sacrum, my sacroiliac, and get into that, those places, which for me this morning are kind of tight. I can also stay so I can show you I'm curling my spine down there to get in. I can also stay on one side and kind of rock around. So I'm getting some shear and not just rolling across, getting the tissue to differentiate against the tissue above and below it so that we have sliding and gliding surfaces where they need to be slidey and glidey and more hydration, change it to the other side. And also like, so it's funny because inflammation is also, is also is often fluid coming to an area, right? But then it's sticking in the area. So it's like, we don't wanna confuse hydration and inflammation. 
hydration means the fluid, the fluids are evenly distributed and healthy in there. And inflammation means that it's kind of stuck in there and the tissue has become inflamed, right? Usually that it's warm there where you got a problem. Let's take it down to your back. So for me, I often wake up and my lower back is kind of tight and just rolling across lets that fluid or inflammation renegotiate the inner space. Let's just go with easy, loose knee drops from side to side. Breathing, feeling the expansion of your lungs on the inhale and releasing on the exhale. And imagining that expansion of the lungs going all the way out to your fingertips. And then let's take it a little deeper, just crossing over. I'm doing this in a very relaxed way. Massaging through my back. And I'm not trying to straighten my leg or have this high kick. I'm just taking it further across so that I get a deeper stretch. And then coming in. And let's take our legs straight down below us. Arms out to the side. We're going to circle, looking towards our feet. And then inhale, open up. Exhaling down. Inhaling open. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Change direction, arms go over your head, look towards your toes. Inhale, open, exhale. Inhale, open, exhale. Inhale, open, exhale, two more. Open it up, last one. And then bring it in, relax. And we'll take a heel rock. So heel rock, you wanna send a wave of movement up and down through your body. Imagine that you are just made of jello. So really soft, loose and easy. And then let your spine, let the bones of your, the big bones of your rib cage, pelvis and head have some arching and curling. Sending this ripple of movement up and down through your body. And then let that go, turn your legs in and out. And let's open our feet slightly wider than our sticky mat and internally rotate. So internally rotating one leg at a time. If this hurts in your knees, then don't do it or do it very carefully. I don't know, this has actually never hurt me in my knees, but you never know. And you can take one heel, cross it over, take it a little deeper. So we're getting that internal rotation spiraling in, but also a quad stretch. Change it to the other side or just keep going back and forth. And then come in. Let's do that Leslie Kamenoff exercise. But first we're gonna warm up our back a little bit. So we're gonna inhale, arms up over your head and exhale, lower it down. I don't know where Leslie learned it. I don't know if he made it up, but I learned it from him. Exhale down, inhale. And he is a wonderful teacher. If you ever get the chance to study with him, inhale, lift, exhale down. His, I think website is the breathing project. Take it down and we're gonna change it. So now you're gonna go up. This is the exercise. Your pelvis is lifted. I'm gonna show my ribs so you can see. You're gonna inhale, let your chest come towards your chin. So this comes in and up. And then from there, you're gonna exhale as much out as feels comfortable. Hold that exhale, roll it down through your spine, vertebra by vertebra. Don't take forever, let this come down. Once you hit the bottom, let the breath fill you back up. So the air just comes back in, or maybe you need to exhale more. Just let your lungs do whatever they need to do. Take a resting breath or two. If you've eaten before doing this, it might feel kind of weird to do this, but if you have an empty stomach, you can really exhale everything out. Pressing back up again, deep breath in, chest to your chin. Hold the chest to your chin as you exhale out. Then roll it down through your spine.
let your breath fill back up. So it kind of creates like a vacuum. Like if I really stay present in it, my guts really draw in and up. So we're moving the inner body. We're getting some relationship between our diaphragm and our guts and also within our gut body. Shake it out, let it go. Third time, last one. We don't want to do like a thousand of these unless you've done them a ton and then you can do more. But if it's kind of new to you or if you don't do it very often, three is plenty. Deep breath in. Exhale. Keep your chin in towards your chest or your chest up towards your chin. Roll it down. Ah, relax and let the whole thing open up again. I love that one. Um, take your arms and legs up in the air, shake it out, shake it out. We're just gonna roll from side to side and we'll open through the middle. So a little more active rolling, opening through the middle. Try to keep your head on the floor. Let this massage out your shoulders and your back. Oh, I did a foam roller uh, class on Thursday. So if you want, and it was for my shoulder and my hips. So it was like shoulders and hips. If you need to do some foam rollering, that was last, what, two days ago. And it's like, I don't know, maybe half an hour. And then I have one more advertisement, and that is I'm teaching a movement for meditators class, really designed for people who do a lot of sitting, but also have some depth practice through uh, meditation. And it will be involving a lot of the spatial stuff, just some basic exercises to help your body open up if you sit a lot, and then some somatic practice. So if you're interested in that, it's on my website, which is lauravward.com. All right, let's roll back and forth, rolling through your spine. And it starts on February 4th. It runs for seven weeks. It's on Sundays in the afternoon, Eastern time. I can put a link for it in the description. And if this, if you're looking at this later, we're in 2024 right now. <laughs> All right, we're gonna grab your await. I have this exciting new, what are these things called? Prop, it is an eight pound ball. You can use a one weight, two weights. We're gonna hold them in our hands, taking it down on the floor. I'm gonna knock my knees together. My feet are pigeon toed. Pitch and toe to knock knee. I'm gonna circle around. So up until now, I have been holding two weights in my hand to do this exercise. You could hold no weights and just hold your hands together, or you can use weights, doubling them up, whatever you need to do, circling around. And change direction. And somebody was asking me where I got my props. I got this prep at five below for like $6. So I'm not a big fan of all of those really cheap stores. And yet I don't make a lot of money. So <laughs> this was, I was, I was like, I need, I knew, I just knew I needed to go in there for something and I didn't know what. And then I saw this and I was like, oh, that's the thing. And come in and let's come to parallel with the arms and legs. If you have a weight, you're just gonna take it up over your head and then bend your elbows, bring it in front of your chest. Inhale, open, exhale. Even if you don't have a weight, up and down, feeling the connection of your center up through your arms, core distal relationship, up and down. We're gonna change it. So you could do this with no weight, with an eight pound weight, what I've got with something lighter, with something heavier. We're gonna cross, you're gonna kick across and spiral. So I'm spiraling my lower body and my upper body, spiraling across. And I'm just coming a quarter of the way up for right now, crossing and opening. If this hurts, you can make it smaller and not do your legs or not do your arms, right? You can spiral half your body. I'm spiraling the whole thing. I'm going to start bringing it up higher. Inhale, open, exhale up. Three more. All 
I'm gonna make an extra one because I, I don't know why I said three instead of four. And release. Ah, let's come back down onto the ground and lift our pelvises up. From this position, you're gonna inch your feet further away, walk them out so that they're farther away from your butt, pulling on the diagonal. Your feet are on the floor parallel, pulling back and forth on the diagonal. So if hamstrings and back body working, and then flex your feet and try it from there. It's actually easier with your feet flexed, or for me it is. And then feet, relax it, come down, give it a break for a second. Hit out the back of your hamstrings. It doesn't have to be a big stretch yet, just release the muscles. And then come back up, same thing. Slide your feet out, pulling back and forth with the feet down on the floor, on the diagonal. and then flex. So if it starts to feel like too much, just flex it up, right? Or come down if you're cramping and release it down. Ah, and from there, let's do one more thing here. Taking your pelvis up, feet are now perpendicular to the floor. My feet are about shoulder distance apart, circling your pelvis around. Let this massage out your shoulders as you're there. And change direction. And then come in and roll it down. So back to that movement for meditators. It's going to be seven weeks starting on February 4th. And we're going to work with like space and also the elements. So earth, air, fire, and water. And how you can move with them and also how they affect your life. Coming into your happy baby, wiggling around, let your happy baby be happy and playful. Playful like a little monkey. Baby monkey playful. Invite that youthful free flow energy into your body. And let's release that and flip over onto hands and knees. We've spent a lot of time down there on our back, but I know I was lecturing a lot today. Uh, let's come onto hands and knees. Opening your hands wider than your sticky mat, circles with your chest down to the floor and then up. Letting your rib cage, lungs, and heart move around, your rib basket, and change direction. Scapula moving around on your back. And then come in, curl your toes under, take it to a downward dog, bend one knee and then the other. Take off my socks. Stretching through your calf and Achilles. I let one hip really drop, so I'm getting the stretch through that top hip, which is what my lower back and hips need. Oh. And then we're just going to roll through a few times. So lifting your heels high, scoop your belly in, round your spine, roll it forward into a plank. Extra, one hand off, and then the other, just an option. Drop your head, roll it up to the ceiling, lower your heels. Heels high, scoop it in, roll it forward. Optional, hand off to the side. Drop your head, roll it up to the ceiling, lower your heels. Heels high, scoop your belly in, round your spine. This time hands are gonna come down by your hips. Drop your head, roll it up, lower your heels. From there, take one leg up as high as it can go, big split on top, reach, 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 reach and release it down. Other leg, reach, 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 and release it down. One more time, up, stretch it out. And by one more time, I really mean two, and release. And that counted as one of the two. Last set, up, and release, and then up. 
and release and come down. And we're going to come onto our forearms with our palms up and then internally rotate and push down, externally rotate, just massaging through your forearm. Let's add this. You're gonna lift your hands, flip it over, lift your hand, flip it over, lift, flip, come here, stop in the name of love, come on everybody. Hands up, draw your hands in. Good. And then let's take it into a forearm plank, reaching out through your heels, reaching out through your head, one knee to the floor at a time, parallel, going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, crossing under one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, take it down, all the way down, bend your knees, let your legs fall from side to side. I feel like I haven't done this class in a long time. I don't think I've done the class really since Saturday. I think it didn't happen on Monday because nobody showed up. Um, but anyway, so I feel like this type of work for my body, I need to do it at least three times a week in order to stay able to do everything else. So, and I feel like because of the holidays and because of um, the holidays, and then I was also gone for that little while. Like I haven't done it that much. Although I was teaching movement at that movement at that meditation retreat. Take your knee under, take it to the side and open, bring it down and shift. Knee goes under, open it up, take it down and shift. Knee goes under, open, bring it down and shift. Knee goes under, open, down. Let this feel yummy. Knee under, blossom, open your heart and lungs, maybe arch your back. So we're getting this knee drop with an arm circle, lungs, chest, and heart opening. Oh, I did something interesting, if I can remember it. It was kind of like this at the retreat in the, yeah, I took a yoga class. It's a very lovely person. And there was something along this line, these lines. It was a little different. Take it down, relax, wag your tail, shake your butt. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Arms out in front of you, opposite arm to leg. Inhale, exhale, up and down, lengthen. It is so warm here, it's unbelievable. and relax, shake it out. Let's go with regular Pilates swimming with a pumping breath. So the pumping breath is a big sniff through your nose. Puff and puff, deep diaphragmatic breathing. Inhale the whole thing up, radiate out, float it around. Imagine you're flying or that you're, I don't know, skydiving. Take it in, big arch up and release it back down. Melt into the floor, wag your tail, inhale, lift, arch open, exhale, bring it down. Keeping your shoulders fairly connected to your back. So as you're going up, keep the connection. If you wanna sink into it, you can. You can try that sinking and pushing or not. Try bending your knees. You can come down for some reason. I feel like I need to stay up here for a second and then take it back into a child's pose. Wiggle yourself around. Maybe turn your head from side to side in your child's pose. If you're not touching the floor with your head, put a block under your head, put your hands under your head. Do something so that your neck can release. You're not holding your head up. So a little bit of free flow movement in your spine, in your head and neck, relaxing your shoulders, big breathing into your body. Ah, filling up like you're a bubble and then really letting it go.
and then shifting your weight back. If you ever get anxious and you feel like you can't breathe, try exhaling a little bit more so you create the space for the breath to come in. So it might be like, oh, I'm trying to inhale and I can't. It might be that you're already too full. So <sighs> slow down your exhalations. You can do a, which will slow down your exhalation, which will is a down regulator, right? If we slow down the exhalation, our body is naturally going to down regulate. That means we are going to be feeling less stressed. Sometimes when we're stressed, we're so stressed, we can't even focus on that stuff. But maybe you can just try to exhale more out so that you can refill up again. All right, we're going to do a tricep push up. I am going to do it with my knees on the floor, coming into a line in my body, pushing up and down. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to go to a downward dog. You can do whatever you need to do from there. And let's come to our sides into just a regular side plank, side forearm plank. You could be here. I like to be here so that I'm not working on balance. I can just work from underneath, pushing up, going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Taking it down onto your side. We are going to kick up. And I'm actually going to go for big kicks now. So up and down, going one, flex up, point down, two, three, these are turned out, four, my knee is going towards my shoulder or behind it, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, come in, let's do a quick quad stretch, grab on with your hand, if you can't grab your leg, if you have a pant or something you can grab onto, grab that. Heel in towards your butt. You're going to internally and externally rotate slightly from there. Well, it's funny. Like I'm talking about not having been here for a long time, but I feel like I really needed that break also from teaching so much. Not that I'm teaching that much, but like I was getting bored of my own classes. So now I feel like, oh, I feel this feels good. I need this. Like we need, I need variety in my life. <laughs> I need, And I need times where I'm not doing something. All right, let's flip it over to the other side, starting with the side plank. I feel like for me to like be able to leave my life and come back and assess it, I have to be gone for at least two weeks, which I had in that time when I was in California in December. Going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Take it down. Flex up, point down. One, two, leg straight down below you, knee behind your shoulder. Three, or at least to the ceiling. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Grab on, stretch your quad, do whatever you need to do on the bottom to make it easy to balance. You're not fighting for your balance there. You can turn it in and out. You can push back. Breathe. And then release it. Come onto your back. Both legs up to the ceiling, give them a shake. Cross one ankle over your knee, draw it in towards you, either staying there or straightening the bottom leg, whatever feels good to you. Breathe into it. Yeah, so having gone away for that two weeks, even though it was a working vacation, it was awesome. I really like working vacations. I like doing things. I like having like movement in my life. Um, I'm not so much a go sit around and on my butt vacationer. And release. 
But also if I go and like do all the tourist things, that exhausts me. I like to be doing my things. <laughs> Cross your ankle over some tourist things maybe, but mostly like being in the woods, going for walks, teaching movement or being in movement, dancing or performing, like anything like that. Those are, those are good working vacations. Making a show. And actually, I had a couple of those last year because I was in Scotland. And at this time last year, I was in Scotland or I was, no, I was going to go to Scotland. I went in February. But dancing, it was perfect. And release, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. And let's just look at the time. I feel like we're probably there. We are. Let's come to a standing forward fold. Feet wide, shifting from side to side, let it go. And then coming in, rolling it up, coming all the way up to standing. Inhale, open. Let's exhale, strong push down, inhale. Fill up your lungs, exhale. Make noise as you blow it out. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Coming down to the ground. Inhale, exhale. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Alrighty. Let me come in and see what is going on if anything is going on. Um, if you are in TV land, please like and subscribe and 